All right, question number seven says, a 10 kilogram sign is hung from the end of a 20 kilogram boom. A boom is uh, something that's typically hooked up to the hinge horizontally on a wall with a cable supporting its weight in this case. Um, so a 10 kilogram sign is hung from a 20 kilogram boom. Uh, it's suspended by a cable attached to the wall at an angle of 30 degrees. And the question is, what is the tension in this cable? So we need to make a free body diagram here. We want to know everything that's acting on the boom. The cable is attached to the boom, and that's what I want to focus on the boom. I don't want to focus on that mass, so, but on the boom itself. That's what might be rotating here. So, and I want this thing to be in equilibrium, which means what? It's the sum of the force will be zero. Sum of the force will be zero. And notice when we do the sum of the forces, it's a pan them up because this is a two-dimensional problem. So we have some of the forces in the x direction equals zero, and the sum of the forces in the y direction equals zero, and the sum of the for some of the torques are going to be zero. We got three equations potentially that we may have to solve. All right, so let's start with sum of the torques equals zero. So, and before we can go there, we need a free body diagram. So, what forces are acting on this boom? Gravitational force of what? Of the boom. Of the boom itself. Where is that concentrated? That's in the middle. Good. Cool. And then there's uh, the, uh, the object. Yeah, 10 kilogram sign hung right there. That's another mg in this case for the 10 kilograms. Cool. What else? The tension. We've got the tension in the cable pointing 30 degrees above the horizontal. What else? So, it's describe to me the force at the hinge. That force. So, well, the boom here, notice this cable is pulling the boom to the left, right? Mm -hmm. So, the hinge, there must be a normal force pushing back. But also, think about it this way if this hinge is not connected to the wall. To the right. So, say one more time. So notice, think about this hinge right here. If this hinge is not somehow connected to the wall, what would happen to this boom? It, it's gonna it would fall down, right? Now, I'm assuming they're not going to rely on friction to hold that in place. Mm -hmm. So technically, if that hinge is fastened to the wall, then there's also a normal force pointing up as well, okay. which is kind of funky. You're like, wait, it's the surface. But the boom is attached to that hinge, and it rests on that hinge. And so there's an upward normal force as well. Cool, so we got quite a few forces going on here. So we'll start with the sum of the torques equaling zero. What do you want to make your hinge? You can choose any position you want to. Should I put a, I mean the hinge is really here, the axial rotation is really here, but what if I made it here? Would that be a good idea? Why not? Because. What do I want to solve for? You want to solve, I don't know. <laughs> Tension in the cable, if the lever arm, if I pick that point, then the lever arm distance for the tension would be zero, and that term would go away, and it wouldn't help me solve for tension. So that would be the worst idea. So, but I could make the tension anywhere along here. Usually want to put it where one of the forces is acting. So I'm not putting it there, though, either. I'm going to put it where the hinge actually is, because I don't know those forces. We'll make them go away. Exactly. Exactly. So in this case, we'll do it really from the hinge. So. If we look, uh, this force right here, clockwise or counterclockwise? And force regarding to the hinge? Yeah, the, oh. the torque. I'm sorry, this torque. It's gonna oh. cause a, this force is going to cause a torque clockwise or counterclockwise? Clockwise. Cool. What about this one? Uh, still clockwise, clockwise. And the tension? Awesome. So I'll make counterclockwise positive again. So in this case, then. Awesome. T sine 30. Times two. So where'd you get times 2 from? Is the cable attached to the boom twice? Wait, no. So it's not well, a pulley system here or anything like that. So it's just, uh, just T sine 30. It's all we got. So and you might be looking at, we had a problem earlier in the semester where we had the wire. We had a, a sign attached no, to a was, wire at the center. No, I was thinking about Oh, I'm sorry. Times two meters. Ignore the man behind the curtain here. Yes. So times two meters. Oh, okay. So I thought you meant 
2 T sine 30 was the force. My bad. We're good. We're good. We make that look like an M. All right, cool. Every other torque is going to be negative because they're all counterclockwise. So how about for the 10 kilogram mass? Good. Concentrate at the center of the boom, which would be one meter mm -hmm. from the hinge. Fantastic. Anything else? Yeah. No, because these guys act at the hinge, so they have arms of zero, and great. So all these add up to zero. And again, I could have just said that the clock, counterclockwise ones equal the clockwise ones, same diff. Mm -hmm. So I usually skip this step and go straight there anyways. So, but T sine 30 degrees times two meters. 10 times 9.8 is 98, times 2 is 196. 196 as well. Oh, and I just wanted to say equals. Cool. And in this case, if we solve for t, so sine 30 is a half, half times 2 is 1. So t just simply equals, oh, and if I moved them over, it's really plus, yeah. So t equals. Great. Problem done. Did we end up having to set up the sum of the force equations? We don't. We don't. Not, to, not for based on what we solved for. We were able to solve for the tension just from the sum of the torque. And that's why I recommend you solve, set up this one first. If you don't get what you need, set up the others. We're going to set up the others because sometimes they want you to solve for these normal forces instead. Mm -hmm. So if you want to do that, we'd set up the sum of the force equations. So sum of the force in the x direction. What forces are acting in the x direction? Uh, the normal. So, yeah, let's... Let's call this F normal X and F normal Y. So we got F normal X points to the right, and? And you can do minus. Minus the T sine, wait, it's going to be adjacent to the Good, T cosine 30, and that will equal zero. Mm -hmm. So and our sum of forces should equal zero. And then some of the forces... Looks terrible. All right. What forces we got pointing up F in the y direction? And, oh, pointing up Let's and y plus uh, t sine 30. Awesome. Minus uh, 20 times 9.5 minus 10 times 9.8. And I'm pointing out. Since we already solved for the tension, we could use this equation to get the normal force in the x direction, and we could use this one to get the normal force in the y direction. Cool. But not what we were asked, so I will stop there.